You understand me? Because people don't believe that you can break down the sugar that's in fruit because they think of it in the same way they think about white sugar yeah. or other types Sucrose, of sugar. Sucrose, pentos, so maltose, and all that. Can you get the people to break down on sugar and why you can eat fruit without worrying about the sugar aspect? Oh, uh, of course. So uh, when you got sugar, you got three main bases of su sugars. You got galactose, which is produced by the black woman's uh, breast. You have fructose, which is actually naturally occurring in your fruits. And then you have glucose, which is naturally occurring in your vegetables, all right? So I already told y'all earlier in the interview uh, that your fructose yields 12,000 angstroms of energy. Your glucose or your vegetables only yield 9,000 angstroms of energy. Fruits is good. The only way I can heal diabetes one or two is by way of fructose. When you get somebody with diabetes and they're insulin dependent, uh, you have something called the island salangra high. So they'll say that sugar raises the glucose. You have glucose load on fruits, which is a total lot. Every diabetic patient that I've had that had one or two hyperglycemia that had or diabetes mellitus, we healed them on an all fruit diet with herbs. Now, this is the reason why fructose. When you eat fructose, fructose bypass the pancreas. The pancreas has something called the islands of Langerhines. You have the alpha cells, which produce glycogen. You have the beta cells that produce insulin. Then you have the delta cells that produce something called somiotostatin. Somiotostatin is a mixture of a growth pituitary hormone, and it's mixed with glycogen again. Well, in order to actually break down glucose and put glucose in the blood to penetrate a cell, that's what insulin does. Insulin is used as a key. So insulin is a key that take glucose, unlock the cellular membrane, and then the cell swallows the glucose and eat it. Then it gets actually broken down and metabolized by something called the mitochondria. And then you yield something called ATP, ADP, and, AT, uh, and AMP. Adenosine triphosphate, adenosine monophosphate, and, and adenosine diphosphate. This is the energy. So we're talking about carbon. Carbon is on your periodic table. All carbon is is sugar. Sugar breaks down into carbon. Carbon, what happens is you eat some sugar, right? You will eat the sugar. Once the sugar gets converted in the body, it is CHO. What the conversion is, is taken out of that hydrogen because hydrogen is acidic. So once you take the hydrogen out of the CHO, it's just carbon and oxygen. This is alkaline. So sugar is alkaline. What's not alkaline is when they take the sugar out of something like a corn, because corn have natural fructose, and then they burn it and change the chemical composition because they put fire to it. The moment you put fire to it, it changes the chemical composition. Now they're in heightening it. So they call this high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Now it's no longer a fructose. It become a dextrose, or it becomes a pentose, which is a five sugar phosphate, or they call it sucrose. These things are called polysaccharides. See that we're not talking about monosaccharides. Monosaccharides is what's in your fruits, what's in your vegetables. Polysaccharides is what they're creating in these white man's laboratories. That's what's bad for us. But back to the fructose. Let me show you how amazing fruits is. If you are diabetic and your pancreas is down because whether it got a, a fluke worm in it, Fasciolosicus busky worm in it, a hook worm, a thread worm, usually you find parasites inside of the pancreas when somebody is suffering from diabetes and you find that mucus is down or the adrenals are down because the adrenals is in control of something called the autonomic nervous system. The prefix to autonomic is auto. These are things that runs on autopilot. Digestion is supposed to be on autopilot. Uh, the flickering of your eyes is on autopilot. Your breathing and your lung capacity is on autopilot. The heartbeat is on autopilot. All these are controlled by the parasympathetic, sympathetic autonomic nervous system. Well, your pancreas yielding insulin, it, that's a nervous system issue because the adrenals are down. And the reason why the adrenals are down because you're eating the wrong foods and these foods are creating toxins and byproducts that you're not getting out of your body because you haven't opened up the lymphatic system and the kidneys to filtrate all of that toxemia out or your skin is not working. Now, check this out. That's the pancreas being down. So what food can I eat that don't break down the glucose? The only other food that I got is fructose. Now, would you glucose low for a couple days? Yes, you will, because you're entering your, you introducing your body to a new sugar. But it's a natural occurring sugar by Yahweh. Look, so you have two types of digestion, right? You have pancreas digestive enzymes that break down the actual glucose. Not only that, the pancreas yield the islas the, uh, of and yields insulin to bring to turn that key to bring glucose to the cell when you can have energy. Fructose completely bypass the pancreas. It go a lipid route. This lipid route is through the liver, and then it's called cellular infusion, where the actual sugar will infuse itself in the cell and don't even use the pancreas. Uh. And there's plenty of articles, the government articles written up on this, and we have the so clinical trials please. with at least 100 diabetics that, that prove this stuff, that we healed them on an all-fruit diet with minimum herbs. So let me ask you, because that was a beautiful breakdown, first of all.
You understand me? I can definitely tell you well studied in your science. You talked about ATP. Mm -hmm. Which fruits have the greatest production for ATP? Uh, we would say high yielding fruits, the fruits that grow the highest to the sky. So now we're talking about carbohydrates. And all that is is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen mixed together. So once that, once that oxygen get out, these are called high yielding carbon constituent so chains. So like bananas? So bana bananas will give you a, a high yielding ATP, but bananas are on the starchy side. So I never recommend anybody eating bananas that's trying to cleanse because now you're going to start building up a whole lot of uh, uh, glycogen on the liver. You see what I'm saying? So we would say things like mangoes, mm -hmm. coconut water, very electrical, cucumbers, very electrical. Now we're starting to get into something that you would call H3O2 change, not H2O, which is, the, which is water like this. See, this water dehydrates you. That's why the more this water you drink, the more dehydrating you are. See, but if you drink your... See, the, the beautiful thing about fruits is not only can you eat the fruit to get the, the micro the uh, macro substance, but the micro substance, which is the structured jelly water called H3O2 in it, is your hydrative factor. So you're supposed to eat your fruits for your water and for your macro constituents. You see what so I'm saying? Yeah, so you're getting the water and the air. At the same time. So I like that because for for, for the indicinity triphosphate, you know, uh, when you utilize cordyceps, yeah. that's one of the things that it increases, right? The Facts. ATP production. So when you're working out, it's consistently giving you oxygen. Facts. You understand me? And what happens, you know, when people work out and why you get those aches, you understand me, is because, you know, you're not getting enough oxygen to that muscle. Facts. So if you consistently getting oxygen while you're working out, Facts. then you can work out more and more and more and more and more. That's why I asked that because if a person takes that particular dietary recommendation or living recommendation when it comes to, I think you said coconut, mango, Cucumbers, water, cucumbers the water fruits, melons. berries, and melons. Yeah. Fruits is your highest. I mean, ber berries is your highest because berries have the oxygenators. Them yeah. are your antioxidants. You know what I'm saying? Them are where all of your biophotons no, and bioflavonoids. So now I want to get to the biophotons and the berries in a second. Well, I, I want to talk, talk about, about your mushrooms though, because you you're talking about the cordyceps. Them are high yielding. Yeah. But if you look at the chemical makeup of cordyceps, and they're really a fungi rather than a mushroom. Yeah, and and, 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 and we're talking and we're talking about the actual mycelium network. Yeah, this is an invisible network that everything is without mushrooms. We wouldn't even. Be yeah, Everything exists right. off this mycelium network. But guess what is the main chemical constituents of mushrooms? Carbon. Mm. Well, guess what carbon is? Sugar. Mm. Gluto glutose, uh, galactose, and, um, uh, and uh, fructose. Mm. So even when you get into the mushroom kingdom, you're still talking about a high sugar diet. Now, there's another thing that you said in there. You talked about...